Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about my toaster sweater, which I'm actually wearing right now. Um, and I made this like about two weeks ago, I would say. Um, and I thought I would talk about my thoughts on the pattern itself, um, and then say some things about like, um, like how it fits and how I like actually wearing it. Um, so yeah, if you don't know, the toaster sweater is a pattern by Soho7 which is an independent uh, pattern designing company. Um, they have uh, two versions of the toaster sweater, at least on their website. I think they actually have um, the toaster sweater available from one of the big four companies. Um, and I think there might be some different versions in that one, but in the standard one, which is the pattern that I bought, which was not like one of the big four, um, that one actually only has two versions. This version is the version 2, and it's a bit more on the casual side, I guess. Um, the other one actually has a separate collar piece. This one, the neckline, is, is just attached to the front and back. So there's like actually not any real facing. This is just like folded over. Um, so yeah. This, I decided to make this pattern with this fabric because the other version has like, it's supposed to be made with a stiffer fabric because it has an actual collar that kind of stands up, I guess. So yeah, that, that brings me, me to this fabric that I actually made the sweater out of and it's this, um, it's a bamboo cotton and, a, and spandex mix. So um, that's good because um, it's really soft but it also um, has a good degree of, uh, what's it called, whenever it snaps back into place. So, recovery, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so it has good recovery, but it's also really soft. And yeah, uh, so like I mentioned, it's a, um, it's a French terry, so it's like a nice sweatshirty type thing. Um, but some French terries are kind of weird because they can look a little bit like uh, I guess like a robe or something if you if you uh, use the wrong pattern. So um, this one is more like the sweatshirty type rather than like the towel French terry, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go right into my experience with actually making this pattern, and my experience with that was actually very positive. Uh, it was a really fast pattern to make. Um, so I cut out the, the pieces on one night, and then I think I just sewed the shoulder seams, and then I like had to go to bed or something, and so I didn't have time. But then the next time I worked on it, I just finished it all in one evening. So it was pretty quick to put together. I tend to be kind of slow with sewing, because um, actually I don't know why I'm really slow <laughs> with sewing, but yeah, I tend to take a lot longer on stuff than just like, one evening and this came together really fast so that's really nice um, and because of that I think it could be really good as a beginner sewing project um, there's not a whole lot of really complicated stuff you need to do so that's uh, that's good there's m like mostly um, straight seams um, the other thing that's really cool is that no serger is required so I actually waited on making this until I got my serger um, and it turns out I didn't really need to do that. Um, I had read online somewhere that that the serger really isn't required, but um, <laughs> I decided I wanted to, to use it anyway. And uh, yeah, so like the only seams that actually require you serging are like the, um, the, the seams that go down the arms and like around here. But then also you straight stitch along uh, this seam, so it doesn't really... <laughs> make a huge difference whether you serge it or if you use a normal zigzag. Uh, the seam right here, it actually says that you should not serge it. Um, I think that's because they want you to like press the seam allowance open. And then like all the, I mean all the edges that I did are finished with a serged edge, but that's not totally necessary, especially because this is a, a knit fabric. Um, I could just pretty much go with um, just top stitching stuff into place. Actually with the uh, <laughs> with my sleeves I didn't serge the edges and I just 
I just sewed them in place. Um, so I finished all the like all the hems with a, a three-step zigzag, which uh, I don't know if they recommended to use that stitch or just a normal zigzag, but I went for the three-step. I don't know, just because it's, I feel like it's a little bit easier to work with. Um, and obviously, like, if you're having issues and skipping stitches, it's less notable, noticeable with the three-step zigzag. So that's always nice. Um, so overall, like, the making process was great. It was like 10 out of 10. Um, so, I'm going to go into talking about wearing it and how I like that. So the comfort level is like 10 out of 10, love it, it's super comfy, but that also has to do with like the fabric choice, I guess. Um, the one thing that I have a problem with is with the fit, and that's like, there's, I feel like there's some weird bunching around the neck. Um, possibly that could be due to my fabric choice, I feel like with, um, uh, a more sturdy knit, it would be a little bit less likely to do this weird bunching. I tried to get a good uh, clip of that in action so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so yeah, that that's the one thing that was a little bit annoying. The other thing with fit um, is I kind of wish I lengthened it a little bit. I am on the taller side, so I tend to lengthen things. Um, I actually made a joke on my Instagram recently where I was like, I guess four inches is my standard for lengthening things because I feel like every time I post a picture there, I'm like, oh, I lengthened it by four inches because <laughs> that pretty much is uh, what I tend to do. I mean, it's not like horribly short. Some things uh, I really cannot get away with the length of them, like whenever I made uh, the named Canerva blouse. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it, but it's the um, it's the button back blouse, um, and you can either do like a, I guess just like a normal blouse, or you can do a peplum style that has um, fabric added to the, the bottom of the normal blouse. And whenever I initially made that without the peplum, it was way too short, and there was like no way I was going to be able to get away with the length that it was, and that was after I lengthened it too, so um, yeah, I tend to tend to have some issues with things being too short. This one's not too short. Um, if I'm wearing my high-waisted ginger jeans, um, it's all pretty much, like, uh, you can't even see any, like, you can't see above my, the, uh, the waistband of my jeans. And I'll also try to insert a clip here where you can see, like, you can see my undershirt with these um, these jeans that I'm wearing right now, which are just some like mid-rise jeans that I found at the thrift store. <laughs> so yeah, um, if I'm wearing just like normal mid-rise jeans, you can like see a little bit above my uh, my waistband. But I tend to wear undershirts usually anyway, so it's like I don't really care <laughs> that much. But it is something to note if you're on the taller side. Um, because uh, I would I would keep in mind measuring the length from the actual um, top of the like the air vent on the side as opposed to um, like the actual bottom of the of the hem of the of the shirt um, the other thing that I like about this is the that the front is a little bit shorter than the back which I think is a, a nice touch it's only slightly slightly shorter but I think it adds a nice little design element, and also, <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able t to tell where the front is if that wasn't the case. Because every time I put it on, I'm like, which side is longer? That side is longer, okay, that, that goes in the back. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case for other people, though. If, if I put labels in my clothing, I could tell then, but otherwise there's like no way I'd be able to tell. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I really like this sewing pattern. If you are a beginner and don't have a ton of experience and wanted a nice sweater with a little bit of a cute like mock neck type of deal, this is definitely something that would be up your alley because um, it's pretty easy, pretty fast, and I really like the way it fits in general. Um, also, if anybody knows how to fix this weird bunching that I'm talking about, please let me know. Um, I don't know if that's something that I did wrong or what, but 
It was a little annoying, but not enough for me to like not wear the shirt or anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like this shirt. I like the color too, but that has nothing to do with the pattern. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!